All right, let's get to this and finish the game. I don't know what just happened technically, but look at ocean. Look at moon. That's beautiful. You don't understand moon. Look at sun. Don't understand the... Uh, look at sun. The view is amazing. I can see the entire island, including the tiny port village I'd arrived at. I toyed with the idea of making a distress signal, but it would probably go unnoticed. Look at the ocean. The view is amazing. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Take rock. I wasn't close enough. And then, oh, gods. I think I remember something happening right now. Oh! Clan Brownwyn Island, July 28th, AD 1501. A sturdy tree, this. Took us from dawn to dusk, but we finally have it down. I'm tired, father. It was indeed clever of us to investigate this island, eh, boy? I've never seen such a gigantic oak, nor do I expect to again. But it's wood shell. Keep us busy of car carpentry. Keep us in the business of carpentry. Father, do you think there was once a house here? It matters not. Why must you always look everywhere but at what matters? <coughs> this is your father? Oh, gods. It, is something troubling your father? Oh, gods. Oh, that's terrible. What is he doing? It's like he's having sex with the body. Now, let's run away. Look at tree. The gigantic stump that evidence the labors of Boyle and his father dominates the clearing. Look at foundation. Look at demon. The monstrous man, tall and thin to an inhuman degree, toward Boyle's father, lifeless body with some kind of metal staff. Boyle had to do something. Look at father. No, look at body. Boyle's the black leg. Throw stone at tree. Oh. Well, I wasn't trying to throw it at you. I was trying to throw it at the tree. I just happen to have a bad aim. What? Where am I? I? Must have shifted into the dark world during the vision. Chubby! See you, Bob? Oh, thank God. I thought I was all alone. What happened to you? I don't know. After you knocked me out in my room, I woke up. Everything was like this. The hotel's ruined. There's blood everywhere. I saw this hotel. And this tall, tall, thin, long man in the coat. Enough to know you're lucky to be alive. He didn't notice me, so I ran up here to hide. How did you get past the doll? What doll? Chubby, what the hell's going on? I told you. What would happen if you followed me into the Shadowlands? What's your problem? Problem. What are these? Tranquilizer pills. Take one. Maybe calm down. The hotel will go back to normal. Won't you need them? I don't need to run away anymore. I know enough now. I know where the wood came from. Oh, by the way, perhaps I can find a way to end this. I was right. The cursed wood came from Clan Brandwin Island. But what good does that knowledge do me? Wait a second. Wait, what does that say? Lin never... Blah, blah, blah. Trilby, I'm very anxious to find this. Meet me back at the hotel in one hour. I must show you my discovery, Lankman. No, I don't want to show you discovery, Lankman. You're already on chapter five. The other page was... Another of these... Oh, wait. The other pop -up was... Zero, uh, was another of those religious people. The Book of Vitigas, Victim 1. The Wooded Cutter. At first... Wait, wait, what? The first of those against whom the prince sought vengeance was the woodcutter. Who had held the tree and the axe that first filled his son. The prince flew in th and his son and he struck the woodcutter down and the woodcutter knew the name of the king. Oh, fuck, my cursor stuck. And the princess turned. 
son. Son, you're always young and are of the most innocent preparation. You're of the innocent. That you may go among your people and tell them of what I will brought. And the, de the deaf cut son fled and told all who he had seen. But the men of technology are arrogant and his words were unheeded. All right, let's see. We're back inside. I've got Speedy Cola, wine, and lock picks. Quite the inventory. I hate that bloody whispering. It's in my ear, it's driving me nuts. Good gods. It's creepy at the beginning, and then it sort of just keeps going and going and going. And before you know it, you really do feel like you're about to go mad. Oh, good gods. Uh, it's like I'm seeing it all new again. Oh, jeez. Let's enter this hole. There's nothing else to do at this point. I should... Wait. Oh, I don't have the pills anymore. That's right. I gave them to the girl. Enter hole. Oh, yep. That's nice. I was in some kind of cavern dug out of the rock beneath the hotel. It seemed to be in a constant state of flux, flitting back and forth between the real world and its dark twin. I was certain that the gigantic stump in the middle of the floor had something to do with this. Oh, jeez. Clan Brownwind Peninsula, July 28th, 55 BC. Cabadath, a cultic druid, awaits the return of his friend and colleague, Galden. He brings news of the invasion of Anglesey by the Roman Seltonius Paulinus. Having fallen out of favor with his fellows for certain radical beliefs and activities, Cabadath lives in solitude in this remote forest clearing and prefers not to travel himself. Cabadath, Galden, you bring news. The foreigners have landed. They could not be deterred by a sorcery. All is lost. Oh, certain are you. I should... Try, try to um, talk like uh, Yoda for Cabadath. Let me see. Let me see if I can even pull this off. And the great druids of Anglesey bow so easily to this brash foreign power. Ah, that's terrible. Do not hang your head yet, my friend. Perhaps the activities for which I was ostracized could yet spell an answer. What are you talking about? You know of my dealings with the ethereal realm. I know what you claim. That there exists some otherworldly territory populated by demons and creatures of magic. And that you, Cabadath, can somehow commune with these creatures. Come inside, and I shall explain. Cabadath, what is this madness? Madness, this is Sparta. But there's one spoken of only reluctantly, a beast possessing of awesome power. You plan to summon a demon, the most terrible of them all, who strikes fear even into the most unflappable creatures I've spoken with. A pain elemental, indeed, the only pain elemental, ruler of a desolate wasteland where none venture. An invulnerable, hugely potent beast that feeds on the agony of others. And today is his day. The day when the boundaries between the realms weaken and he glimpses our world. To bring him through at that point should be simple. Even if you could conjure such a thing, how would you have a defender land? I have much knowledge in the ways of magic. With the correct bindings, any demon can be forced to my will. 
<coughs> oh, it's terrible. I feel like someone just punched me in the liver. All that remains is the summoning. Cabadath, it pains me to see you build your hopes on such nonsense. Be silent and watch. You shall, soon, you shall see your nonsense soon enough. In this hall of death, and by the light of Belenus's... Oh, not reading black magic. I've said it before. Say it again right now. I don't read black magic. Not doing it. I don't care if it is made up gobbledygook. Oh, crazy. Show yourself, Cabinet, please stop this. Show yourself. Ooh. Oh, gods. Ah, creepy. It's huge. It, it is larger than I anticipated. But she's a uh, must obey the rules of magic. It is bound. I can command it. Or you can't. No! It's far more powerful than I thought. God didn't help me. But forgive me, Cabadath. No! Galden, I beg you. Don't let it take me alive. Wow, that's disgusting. It sounded like it ate him. Shizo, of course, is no use for me. It feeds on pain. It does not kill its prisoners. Cabadath's agony was a particularly rare morsel, and Shizo ensured it would last. His soul was placed inside an oak sapling on the side of his old home to grant his body immortality. For five centuries, as the trees grew, he knew torment beyond even the most his most depraved imaginings. By then, his body was warped, and his mind long fallen into soulless dementia. He was Chizo's, utterly and completely his slave. Trilby, Siobhan, you we were supposed to leave. I couldn't, I just... I bet the professor... He's dead. I know. He was killed by the shadows. Just like they will kill you if you don't get away from here. What is this place? This cave is the center of the reality shift. This stump is what's causing it all. How? It is the vessel for the soul of the tall man. The acolyte of Chizu. Lankman. Nice to see a friendly face. Amazing, isn't it? Of all the things Sir Roderick could have used to murder his son, he chose that dull idol. Placing the soul of John Defoe into the wooden into the wood alongside Cabadaphs, infusing the poor retard with Shizo's magic, allowing him to come back infinitely more powerful than before. Certainly pretty lucky. Lucky? Shizo had to wait two thousand years for that opportunity. The opportunity to blend magic and science in a single entity. The opportunity to create the bridge. What are you talking about? The bridge between the realms. Over which Chizo will cross into our universe and purify mankind. The order has waited for 200 years for the prophecy to be fulfilled. You're not with the Ministry of Occultism. Who are you? 200 years ago, the prophet Jack Freehorn founded the Order of Blessed Agonies. Since then, we have grown and watched and waited. It was only in recent years that the events foretold in the Book of Chizo began to occur. It mentioned John Defoe, and it mentioned you. Me? You were the, you were the one prophesied to guide the bridgekeeper to his destiny. But he didn't finish the job. All three aspects of John Defoe had to be destroyed to create the bridge, body, uh, bridge, body, mind, and soul. He only destroyed his body. His soul and mind remained. Had I known about this, I wouldn't even have done that. That will truly disappoint my superiors. They were quite adamant that I should try to persuade you to join our cause and fulfill your fo foretold duty. Is that why you're helping me? They thought if I guided you through your visions and showed you the appropriate passages from our holy books, you'd understand that the prophecy is real. The 
honestly believed I joined some insane cult just because he handed me some leaflets. Personally, no. Oh! I feel my gut brought an explosion of ice cold agony. I heard the pitter patter of my blood on the rocky floor. The pain, the surprise, and my exhaustion went together to cause immediate unconsciousness. I woke to find myself splayed upon the slump. Blood still slowly leaking from my wound. In my injured state, I could barely move. My limbs refused to respond. I was as weak as a newborn. Thank you, man. Oh, good, you're awake. I was afraid you missed this. What are you doing? After staggering ineptitude and defilement manner, the order needed to nudge things along. We need a connection. To Jesus, I hope administrator is coming. Today might be the only opportunity we have all year to summon a tall man. We're going to bring that thing into our world. But it's never a ritual of blessed agonies and an offering. After he takes your life, he'll be grateful to us. Then he will guide us to our destiny. So why did you stab me? What if I'm already dead by the time he gets here? He won't be. And like you two will be down on their own terms. They don't weakly let their life slip away from one easily from life life. Hush now. Capitan is coming. Now this is silly because no, I call the Cabadap to the wood that is just sore. I call thee from the north. Drink cola. To this root of the beverage. Oh, it, it will still let you do this. I thought of myself and then I too much of a professional to drown my sorrows. I should probably be more specific. Hit man. My attempt to move only made things worse. I felt a snap of pain. Something snapped behind my eyes. Filling my vision with spots. My holy from the east. Losing blood steadily, my arms and legs were limp and unresponsive. Couldn't move. The pain has now replaced my school with numbness, though spreading fast. What my eyes? Siobhan, are you there? She's here, but she can't answer you. She has nothing to do with this like man. Let her go. On the contrary, it is important that all three of us be here. Part of the ritual. Oh, wait, I just don't want to mess this all up. I call thee from the west. You had the idol of John Defoe all along. I did. I placed it here to reunite the wood with the tree from which it came. Cabinet will appreciate the sentiment. Why is John Defoe the bridge? What makes him so special? His wood in the scientific realm filled with magical wood. The magic brought him back as a wraith. As such, he's an entity in both realms, of both magic and science. Stupid plot, but one from each side of the border is the bridge, just as the prophecy said. Not yet, but I was pretty close. Oh. Here he comes. Reality conflicts from realm to realm, tormented and confused. And this madness that we might bring thee to us is becoming harder and harder to breathe. Air rattled in and out of my lungs like a buzz song. Yeah, but that was pretty close. Yeah, I know, it's silly to. This is the only way to solve the puzzle. And it have a death. Oh. Not yet, but that was pretty close. Oh, God. Presenting with blessed agonies. Body, mind, and soul. My vision was climbing up around the edges, it seemed like my stubborn will was the only thing keeping me alive. That's 
why we choose to die. I died. Present thee with the guide. Failed in his duty for thee to judge. Come. There he is. Only took him half hour to arrive. What? He's dead. No, that's not possible. Master. Master, please, no. No. <laughs> Trilby. Go back, Trilby. Leave me alone. I'm dead. Not yet. Not fully. Your mind and soul are drifting apart from your body. With enough, enough power, there's still time to pull them back. But you must have the will to return. Forget it. I've had enough. I did the assignments. I made myself useful. I lived up to the reputation the foe mana gave me. Today I gave everything I could. And I still died. There's still work to be done. You have not yet completed, to your, du completed your duty. Simba. Just let me sleep. Stronger men than you have tried to fight destiny. Then succeeded. Past, present, and future are all different faces of the same die, and a few and few can see them all at once. But I can, and the future demands that you live. Return now. I have marked the path. Please, just let it end. Pleading to me is useless. I'm just as much a prisoner of fate as you. The future yet actions are destined to bring about has already taken place. Without your part. I would not be here to restore your life. So you see, by my mere presence, your decision is already made. Who are you? A murderer and a madman, and a puppet of forces neither of us could possibly comprehend. Trilby, say something. What? You're alive. My gods, I didn't even know if I was doing it properly. But I did it. You're alive. Where's this Linkman? That tall man took him. He did something horrible to him. And then he took him away. Wait. Where's my Where's my waistcoat? Shh. Don't talk. I've already called for an ambulance. Let's get you back upstairs. Wait. See that wooden idol? Yes. Bring it with us. Wrap it tightly in clothes and bring it with us. Don't let it touch your bare skin. Uh, okay. And now it's across from me. The reality shift had cleared up, and we were free to leave. An SCP cleanup crew arrived with the ambulance. No trace of our bed or the hotel staff was found. Officially, they've been classified as unexplained disappearances. Lankman and the tall man seem to have also vanished, which does not surprise me in the least. Siobhan signed the official secrets act, and last I heard, is staying with her parents to recuperate. Which just leaves me to write up my notes, with the idol that haunts my dreams gazing at me from across my desk. I was dead. I can't pretend I wasn't. No amount of CPR could have brought me back from where I was. So who did? The man in red. Who was he? Not an insane hallucination in brain death. Unimportant. I am alive, and that's all that matters. Just that. The destiny of this wretched statuette that I am apparently fated to carry out. Every instinct of my being wants to burn into ashes and grind them into the dirt, but I do not. Lankman spoke of a prophecy that the destruction of John Defoe's soul would somehow help him and his orders summon the Dark God. So if I destroy the idol, they win. But what else can I do? I certainly can't keep it. I know from experience that it leaks malevolent influence like a broken pipe leaks water. The only other option is to hide it. But where can I hide such a thing and ensure that it's never found again by human hands? I shall have to think about this. Trilby, July 29th, 
1997, which is also the birth date of Captain um, Che Hao from the, um, what do you call, from the game uh, Seven Days of Skeptic. So there are all these connections between them at this point. I believe, though, he went back and um, you know, retconned a lot of this. Well, sit back and enjoy your endings, kids. We've beaten Trilby's notes. The fulfillment of the prophecy continues. The ritual for the summoning of Chizo will go ahead. Events have been set in motion that cannot be stopped. That's creepy. We have the blood of the guide. Now we must wait. Wait. And prepare. Mwahaha! All right, that's it. That's Trilby's notes. Feel free to read all this. I'm not going to. I hate this book. Alright, I'm gonna cut in here really quickly. This is Daishi. Um, Yahtzee. Cut it with the occult stuff and make Trilby a good guy. I mean, all of us want him to actually enjoy himself and have a good life. And as far as I understand it, um, the next game in this series, while wrapping up the storyline, is even worse for his character. Oh, there's my girlfriend, Seal Bond. What, what? I don't know when I got this cold, but it is killing me. But yeah, I mean, it'd be cool if Yahtzee let people develop games using his character, since I know he's going to continue killing it. He's not too good of a writer, but he has some interesting conceptions, ideas. Now that's it, kids. Thank you for enjoying Trilby's Notes. Um, join us, because soon we're going to be getting into Six Days a Something. Um, until then, this is Daishi signing off.